This isn't a lower back stressor. It's all about hamstrings there. And you're still gonna get that lower back work. Hey, what's up guys? Gary Walker here with liveanabolic.com and welcome back for another video. In this video, I'm gonna give you the eight best dumbbell exercises you can do as an older man. Here's the thing with the design of these exercises I chose. Now that you are older, you've got to really prioritize boosting your hormone level. So a lot of this that I'm about to give you is all about boosting testosterone levels and growth hormone levels, but also helping with your mobility. So with that being said, let's get into exercise number one. Typically, I like to start with the biggest muscle groups first. That is going to be the quads, the glutes. So we're gonna be doing an actual leg movement. A lot of times I will give you a goblet squat, dumbbell squat, something like that. However, one thing I've learned after working with numerous older men is you tend to lack not only mobility in your hips, your knees, your ankles, but also balance and stability. That's one of the things that's most neglected. So basically what I wanna do here is give you some alternating reverse lunges for my first exercise. Because again, you're still working your quads, your glutes, your core, your hamstrings, you're getting a lot of good work with the lower body. But the other thing that you're getting is stability work and balance work, which is key as you get older. So initially, if you have to do this, it's okay to do one leg at a time and hold on to something for balance. But I'm gonna show you basically what this movement looks like. So if you can, if you've got good enough balance to just get straight into the alternating reverse lunges, what you're gonna do, one dumbbell with each hand, all right? Basically, this is actually gonna help with your balance naturally. What I like to do is take a nice step back, come straight down. It's okay to get a slight forward lean when you're doing this, come right back up and then go back into your opposite leg. All right, this is gonna be one rep, one rep for each leg. If the balance is an issue for you, here's the other thing you can do. Like I said, you can just get one leg started at a time. Go ahead and set up in your current position here, your lunge position, drop down, raise back, drop down, raise back to the top. You don't have to do the alternating version yet. However, make that your goal because that's where a lot of the balance and stability issues are gonna come from. Also, if you can't use weight, just use body weight. Go ahead and keep your hands in front of you, whatever you need to do to help with the balance. At the end of the day, that's why I'm choosing this for your number one leg exercise is because I really want you to not only focus on building strength in your quads, your glutes, adductors, but also adding to your stability and adding to your balance. That is crucial as you get older, all right? So again, one more time, no weight whatsoever. Keep your hands in front of you, keep them to the sides, whatever you need to do to offset the lack of balance. You can go one, two, or you can alternate. Back, back. Either one of those are gonna work. All right, second exercise, we're gonna stay with the lower body, all right? But we're gonna do posterior chain work, meaning the back side of your body. This next exercise is gonna focus on your hamstrings, glutes, low back. One of the things I notice again with older men is that weaker posterior area. Everyone likes to work the front because everyone sees the front. The back is neglected more than any other body part. And I'm not just talking the lats, your actual back itself, but the whole back side, glutes, hamstrings. If you don't work the back as much as you work the front, that's gonna create imbalances within your physique, not just the look, but when you create imbalances, the next thing that that typically tends to lead to are injuries, all right? So if you're working the quads, you wanna work the hamstrings. If you're working the chest, you wanna work the back. So just remember that, you wanna work the back just as often as you work the front. All right, so for this back movement, I'm actually choosing an RDL. So typically, if you watch some of my other videos, I either throw in a deadlift, a dumbbell deadlift, or a dumbbell RDL. Main difference, if you're doing a deadlift, you're still mimicking a squat movement. 
nothing wrong with that, but we just did the lunges. That's gonna take care of a lot of the muscle groups that the squat is working, all right? Now I just want to really focus on stretching the hamstrings. So to do that with the dumbbell RDL, basically what you wanna do, slight bend in your knee. You don't want stiff legs. That's something that a lot of people used to do. It's called a stiff leg deadlift. When you're younger, great exercise. Now that you're older, typically your muscles, specifically your hamstrings are tighter. It's easy to strain or pull or completely tear your hamstring. So to avoid that, we're gonna do slight bend knee, bend knee. Keep the dumbbells in front of your body. You actually wanna ride the dumbbells down your legs while getting your butt back. That's called a hip hinge. When you get your butt back this way, you're hinging at the hips. That's gonna keep your lower back safe. And again, this is a smaller movement. It's not a full dumbbell from the ground. So basically here, the other thing you wanna focus on, chest out, shoulders back, get the glutes back, and then ride the dumbbells down. Right here, I feel a full stretch in my hamstrings. Now bring it up to the top, and then squeeze your glutes together at the top. That's the other thing you wanna focus on, nice, slow, and under control. Then go back, hip, hip hinge, ride the dumbbells down, nice stretch right back to the top. One last point here. You'll notice, don't assume I'm not flexible because I'm stopping at this point right below my knees. That's basically all you need to do if you're doing the hip hinge correctly. If you go too deep, people tend to round their lower back. That's when you create irritation in your lumbar spine, lower back, and you take it away from your hamstrings. We just want the hamstrings right here, right here, right here. Hamstrings are fully stretched in this position. I can get lower, but to get lower, watch what happens. Watch my lower back. I'm rounding here. Now I'm lower, but I'm not working my hamstrings. All I'm doing is working my lower back. So on the way up, lower back, lower back, lower back, lower back here, my hamstrings finally kick in, and then I'm pulling with the hamstrings. That's not what you're focusing on with this exercise, all right? This isn't a lower back stressor, it's all about hamstrings there and you're still going to get that lower back work but it's not going to over stretch the back at the bottom all right these are the dumbbell rdls let's keep the weights there all right so next exercise we've targeted the lower body now we're going to get up to some of the bigger muscles of the upper body one thing i am choosing here i'm going to do a dumbbell exercise for the chest however we're not gonna do a flat press, meaning just a standard bench press. As you get older, that tends to create some tension in the shoulders, all right? Also, the most neglected part of the chest, specifically for men, upper chest. So we're gonna find an exercise that targets more upper, mid, still gonna work your entire chest. It's gonna take some stress off of the shoulders and really focus more on the upper pec. So we're gonna do an incline press, but 30 degree incline press, all right? Basically, if you're an old school gym guy or you remember high school gyms, they all had these 45 degree chest presses. The problem with doing a bench press at this angle is you're putting a ton of stress on your shoulders and then you're also working the anterior part of your shoulders more than the upper chest. That's the front part of your shoulder. So the shoulders are taking the brunt of the work in this position. That's why I always recommend for my older guys, specifically a 30 degree. This is a more natural position for your shoulders. You're still gonna get a lot of great chest development. Actually more because you're minimizing the work from the deltoids, right, the shoulders. So basically here, what we're gonna do, standard bench press, but if you've seen my other videos, then you know what I like to do with my older guys in the grip position, rotate them in slightly. That is external rotation of the humerus. That's gonna give you more clearance in your shoulder joint as well. From there, nice stretch towards the upper chest. Perfect stretch here. Right back up to the top and towards the center. So again, down and out to get the good stretch. As you press up, go up and in. Nice, natural movement. Down and out, full stretch of the chest, up and in to make sure you maximize that contraction at the top. 
we'll do a couple more of these. All right, so, and again, the hand position is crucial when you're doing any kind of chest movement as an older guy because one of the biggest issues I see are guys have a lot of wear and tear on the shoulder joints. Specifically, if you haven't worked out for a while and then you just start back doing things you used to do with the typical pronated grip, going straight into barbell work or overhand work, that's gonna create so much tension on the shoulder joint. It leads to a lot of shoulder impingements, rotator cuff injuries. So you can avoid some of that or at least minimize some of those injuries just by offsetting the grip slightly by doing this little natural rotation, which is more of a neutral grip. And it's gonna open up the shoulder joint for you guys. All right, now, like I told you earlier, if you're working the front, you need to work the back. So what I'm gonna do now is go to my upper back exercises. We're gonna keep the bench for this one. And basically all I'm gonna do here is a dumbbell row, all right? So we're gonna do dumbbell row. I like the dumbbell rows, it's a really good exercise. You actually, by setting up in this position, you have a rigid spine, which is a lot safer, as opposed to just doing a standard standing bent over row. Other thing you wanna focus on, once your arm is gonna be hanging here with the weight, you always wanna lead with the elbow. And here, you're drawing the elbow back behind your body. Nice contraction. Bring it down nice and slow, all right? So again, weight is hanging here. Elbow is coming back. Just like that, nice and slow. Do three more of these. Two, one more. Three. All right, so once you've done this one, all you do is rotate. You're gonna alternate, make sure you get the other side. Same thing, lead with that elbow, back. Stretch, back. All right, so now we've got our back work done. So we've worked pretty much all the legs, hamstrings, glutes. We've hit our chest, we've hit our back. Now, next big muscle group, we're gonna hit these deltoids. We're gonna do the shoulder work here. You can do overhead shoulder press, seated or standing, either one. If you've got back issues, I actually recommend you bring the bench up so you have some back support. If you don't have any back issues, all you wanna make sure you're doing when you're doing this shoulder press is keeping your core tight. That's gonna create an internal belt around your spine. Keep your core tight. Somebody's trying to punch you in the gut, what do you do? Tighten it up. If you need help getting the dumbbells up, which I know is another issue, place them on the edge of your knees, lean forward, kick one up, kick the other one. Once you're here, a typical barbell or overhead position, your palms are away from your body. If you see what that does to your shoulders, a lot of tension, a lot of stress on the shoulder joint. So you can offset some of that same hand rotation here. Also, as the hands come in, notice my elbows go forward. That's what you want. You wanna keep your elbows in front of your body slightly, core tight, press overhead. Control the weight down, press overhead. Do three more of these. One more. All right, that's how you're gonna do your shoulder press. Again, just slight variations in hand positioning, elbow positioning, all of those are gonna lead to safer joints, healthier joints, safer movements for your joints, all right? You still wanna work some of these smaller movements. So we've done a lot of compound movements with some of these exercises I've demonstrated. Now we're gonna get into bicep movement because I love working biceps. So. For this exercise, I'm choosing an alternating bicep curl. So pretty traditional exercise here. Basically, when you're working your biceps, make sure chest is out, shoulders are back, and we're gonna rotate this right across the front of the body, right back down. Another rotation. One other thing I really want you to pay attention to, I'm going nice and slow with each of these reps. I'm not throwing it up and cheating by bringing my elbows forward and I'm not dropping the weight. It's control it up, control it down. Control it up, control it down. Let me do two more of, of these. All right, 
Now we've got biceps worked. The next exercise is one of my favorite tricep exercises. So it is a dumbbell skull crusher. All right, so we are gonna use a flat bench for this version. I like the stretch you get with the flat bench on a dumbbell skull crusher. Biggest point I wanna make here. If you notice the dumbbells right now are straight up over my body, there's no tension in my triceps. To start the movement, all I want you to do is actually bring the dumbbells behind your head here, okay? That's gonna be your starting position with every rep. That's gonna keep tension in your triceps. Nice stretch on the way down. Nice contraction on the way towards the top. Show you three of these. Let's go one more. All right, these are dumbbell skull crushers. So that's gonna do a really good job of working your triceps. Again, balance work. So not only are we working chest, we're working back. Not only are you working biceps, you're working triceps. Working the quads, we're working the hamstrings. So that's the thing I really want you to focus on when you're looking at exercise pairing. If you're working one muscle group towards the front, you gotta work the same towards the back. All right, and throwing in some of that balance work is key for older men, which is why I'm doing the lunges as opposed to dumbbell squats or just regular standard squats or even goblet squats, all right? And the last one is designed to give you strength in the core, balance, posture strength, all those things. This is gonna be a suitcase carry. So basically what you wanna do, you actually wanna get the heaviest weight you have access to, all right? And you're just gonna grab one. So what this does, you wanna make sure your shoulders stay square. You don't want this to pull you down. Keep it pulled up. That's gonna help work the opposite side, the obliques, tire core, low back, glutes. And you want to walk 12 steps one way, 12 steps back. So we're just gonna walk just like this. One side there, keep your core tight. All right, so basically you're just gonna get your steps, switch hand positions, switch opposite hands, do the same thing again. Don't allow, you, allow it to pull you. And don't try to overcompensate by leaning this way either. Try to keep those shoulders square right here, core tight, and then you're just gonna walk, just like this. All right, so this is a dumbbell suitcase carry. Here's the difference. A lot of videos you'll see, I talk a lot about doing farmer carries. Farmer carries work really well for overall core strength as well. What's the difference? Farmer carry, you got heavy weight in both hands and you're walking with both. However, for my older men, again, I've been specifically working with older men for a while now. So a lot of these exercises I'm giving you are based on feedback I'm seeing in my older clients. Things they're neglecting, things they need help with, all right? So that's why I'm showing you some of these exercises. So a lot of times it's not just overall core strength, but it's that you're, you're working some of the inner belt, which is what it's called, You've got your spine, you wanna build a strong belt around it. Dumbbell carries, dumbbell suitcase carries are one of those exercises that are gonna benefit you tremendously. That's one of the biggest things I want you to see with this video is there's a lot of balance, stability, overall core strength that you're getting with all of the movements I've chosen. So again, as an older guy, you wanna be specific with those things. If you got any questions at all, even if it's not about exercises, let us know in the comment section. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Other than that, man, that's all that I got. Get busy, get after it, and God bless.